Hello everyone, Tima Game here, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you some more Call of Duty Black Ops 2 gameplay. Now today, as you can see, I'm playing some Domination on the map raid, and I'm using the Foul. And this is the first game, actually, I used the Foul in Call of Duty. So, my very, very first game with the Foul, and I'm running it with a small secondary, Perk 1 Greed as a wild card, because obviously when you've just used a weapon for the first time, you haven't unlocked any attachments yet. So when I'm in this situation, what I like to do is run perk one greed and run hardline and lightweight. Now hardline's obviously a great perk because it enables you to get to your score streaks quicker. And getting to them quicker means you can dominate the map easier, dominate the game and go on for an easier win. So that's a really good one. And I mentioned the benefit of lightweight earlier. When you're still a little bit unfamiliar with the classes and with the map layouts, having lightweight's pretty good. It's a good idea because it enables you to get around quicker. So if you do find yourself off the beaten track, you can run back to a position of strength very very easily so that's my perk one layout I'm running toughness and dexterity now I've been running those pretty much non-stop but toughness is ability to reduce flinch when hit is especially important with a semi-auto weapon because you haven't got the benefit of being able to spray a guy down you need to be accurate so toughness is a great perk to manage that and dexterity penned with lightweight is a really good combination because if you're gonna be sprinting around more and you are if you're gonna be using lightweight you need to have that third perk, Dexterity, which enables you to pull your weapon up faster after you've been caught sprinting, so then at least you have a chance in a gunfight. So that's all my setups, but before I get onto the main part of the commentary, which is going to be building on what I started in the, my first commentary, talking about getting yourself into a Call of Duty nice and easily, what I want to talk about first is the Fal, because this weapon is absolutely incredible, and I don't know if you guys have tried this, but the Fal is absolutely amazing pretty much even up to very very long ranges and that's because it has a minimum damage of 40 in the game so it's never ever going to be more than the three bullet kill if you're accurate and because it's so accurate i mean you, you'll see examples throughout the entire gameplay of just how accurate it is just there for example it has no recoil so if you've got some decent aim you can drop people from pretty much the entire map and that is a really great ability to have, especially on an open map like Raid, which, although it has a lot of close quarter areas on the way to major map points, the vast majority of the map where the battle takes place, which is the courtyard in the middle, the alley to the left hand side that I'm just about to Hellstorm missile, and the B-Dom sort of rotunda on the right hand side, those are the major areas of the battle and if you've got a, an SMG in there you're going to struggle sometimes but the great thing about the FAL is you're never at a range where you're not in a gunfight because if you turn the corner with an MP7 and you see a guy absolutely miles away in a window you know that if that guy's aim is decent you're probably going to die but the great thing with the FAL is you are never ever out of a chance so if you've got good aim this gun is absolutely incredible it's brilliant over pretty much every range and you saw with that last kill there it's got reasonable hip fire and at close ranges it does a minimum damage of 55 so if you're right up in a guy's face you can two bullet kill someone so although it isn't particularly designed for close quarter combat because it's so accurate because it's such a high damage weapon and because it's got reasonable hip fire you can still have a chance in those gunfights as well so it really is a brilliant all-round weapon it's one I'd highly highly recommend but what I'm going to be talking about for the rest of the commentary is Building on what I started on last commentary, which was talking about tactics and methods that you can use to slowly ease yourself in while you're beginning to learn and understand the feel of the game. And what I mentioned briefly last time was sentry guns. Now, sentry guns are only 800 points, I think, maximum. And that's my highest kill streak in this game. I'm running UAV, which is a mandatory at the start of the game, considering so few people have ghost, and it's a great score streak. But I'm running Hellstorm Missile second. And then Sentry Gun is my final one on 800 points, so I've gone with a pretty low point streak setup in this one. And the great thing with running Hardline is that makes that even easier to get. So by running this mid to low range score streak setup, I'm going to get them a lot more often and build my confidence, build into the games, begin to understand the map layout more, get good scores a lot easier. And then when you do step up, you're going to be stepping up into strength. But what I wanted to talk about is two real types of score streak and the first one of those is aerial denials now I mentioned that very very briefly in the first commentary again but I wanted to go into a little bit more depth here and that is an aerial denial kill streak or score streak or whatever it's going to be called in the game is one that you can call in remotely it can go off into a distant part of the map and destroy people with explosives so predator missiles for an example mortar strikes and then in this game lightning strikes and hellstorm missiles are the best examples of that 
And what you can do is, for example, if you just died and you're miles away from the objective and you hear that they're losing B, you can just get the missile down and use it to deny that part of the map. And that's why I call them aerial denials, because they just give you a little bit of extra tactical flexibility. Sometimes in Call of Duty, because you die so quickly, it's inevitable that you are going to get flushed out of a building or flushed out of objectives. It's just going to happen. But the great thing by having this point streak or score streak setup is, if you are being pushed off B, you can use a Hellstorm missile to drive the enemy off, especially on a very open map like Raid. You can push them back and then you can move up into the area and begin to go from there but this is where the sentry gun comes into its own now in this gameplay I think I'm playing with a four or five man party and at least two of us were running sentry guns you can see I'm running mine now and I've just got one and the great thing with sentry guns are you can use that to deny a massive area of the map to the enemy for a huge amount of time because sentry guns have been monstrously buffed in this Call of Duty and I think that was that's a pretty much a good thing because in Black Ops and in Modern Warfare 3 they were ridiculously easy to destroy I mean one knife could destroy them so you could put it down and two seconds later it's dead and that doesn't happen very very often in this game but the problem you saw with one is it would quite often wound a guy and then he'd run away and he wouldn't be killed. It didn't seem to have the stopping power to actually drop too many people. But the great thing is in Black Ops 2 the sentry gun is fantastic. And in this gameplay, you just see it go in the kill feed and it gets me four or five kills a minute minimum. And it's absolutely amazing. And the good thing is you can call in multiple sentry guns. So I think in this point, one of the points in this gameplay, we actually had so many down that we'd earned more and we couldn't physically place them because we had so many sentry guns down. So that just goes to show how hard they are to destroy now. You've got to launch them or you've got to pour some fire into them. So if you are playing against a team that's using them, take that thing out as fast as possible because it can pretty much deny an entire area to the enemy. And what we used to do with them and what we did with them in this gameplay is use them in two ways. You just saw one of my teammates run over my shoulder to place one on the right hand side of the map from where we're looking. And this is called a flank guard. Now in Call of Duty and in most maps there's a, a larger amount of ways to get around the map. And the first major use of a sentry gun is to block one of those areas off. So what we did is we put down that one on the right hand side of the map to guard our flank and to stop the enemies from coming round the side. Now, after a while, the enemies begin to realise there's a sentry gun there. I mean, it's only natural. If you keep getting shot at by the same sentry gun, you're not going to go back there after a while. But what we did in this gameplay is set up heavily on the B side. And you can see on the radar here, the vast majority of the team are on the B side of the map, locking this side down. And we're using that sentry gun on the right hand side to just stop enemy flank attacks, make sure they can't come through this courtyard here. And if they do, I'm in a position now to take them out with my teammate just in front of me. So by using the sentry gun as a sort of outlooker for you, one right at the back, and you can just see where I'm about to place it here. That's a perfect position for one on this map, just as I move it. But anywhere around back here, with it's got a little bit of cover in front of it, it's a long way away from the enemy, so they will find it difficult to destroy, and it can really cover your ass many, many times. And we use this to completely block out this right side, and it defends that and stops the enemy from using that flank. Then what they do is they get channeled into the middle, which is where we are spending most of our game time, and then we can use our weapons and our gun skill to take them out. So they've either got a choice of running into six guys, or running into a very hard to destroy sentry gun. So that really puts them on the back foot. But when you get more and more sentry guns, you can use that to overlook B as well. And at several points of this gameplay, we had multiple sentry guns overlooking B. So like I said earlier, if you do get pushed off the objective, your sentry guns left behind you most of the time. And that can be used to sweep the enemy clear, or at least, even if it does get destroyed, it can buy you that extra 10 or 15 seconds you need to get in that guy's face and recapture the objective. So. Those are the two really, really beneficial kill streaks or score streaks to run in objective game mode. Sentry guns and an aerial denial style kill streak like the Hellstorm missile here or a lightning strike. And whichever one of those you run, they've all got their own strengths and weaknesses. Lightning strikes are much more immediate impact. It can take enemies out if you're under pressure and you desperately need to stop an enemy team from capturing an objective. But equally, the Hellstorm missile you can aim it, so if your initial area doesn't have any, any enemies in, you can pan across the map and find somewhere where it does. And equally, it has a wider area of impact, so if you detonate those pellets early, you can spread out and take quite a few enemies out. So they both have their own strengths and weaknesses, find which one works best for you. But either of them, 
paired with a UAV and a sentry gun really puts you on the, the front foot in a domination or a hard point style game mode. Because you've got everything to back you up, you've got a great weapon in the file, and if you just coordinate effectively with your team, watch each other's backs, you can control the game and get a score like this. And I think I went 50 and 2 in the end with very, very low kill streaks and just playing sensibly, controlling everyone's positions, and you can win very, very easily like we did here. But guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the gameplay and the commentary. If you did, it'd be brilliant if you could rate the video. But once again, as always, guys, thanks for watching and have a great day.